Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Uh, let's start with something like this. Here's e to the x. Let's go from x equals 0 to x equals 5. Let's take that region and let's rotate it around the x-axis. If we rotate this around the x-axis, we're going to get something that looks kind of like a funnel, a funnel type shape. Remember the whole idea for these problems is to take the area of the slice and add it all up. That's what an integral is. An integral is an infinite sum, an infinite sum of the areas. So we're really looking at the integral of the area, x is my variable. Right, so I want the integral of the area at x, I think about x as being a variable and then I vary x across the entire region, at each, uh, at each x position I get a different circle slice. Right, so this is the area at x. And then if I move x along the entire region, the area is actually getting bigger as we move here. And we're adding them all up, which makes the volume of the region. Well, the area of a disk is pi r squared. So I want integral of pi r squared dx. x is my variable. The radius at this at this value is exactly the function. Right, so the, at some generic value of x, the radius of this red circle is e to the x, because e to the x is the height of the function which gets rotated all the way around. All right, so this is e to the x pi e to the x squared. That's pi r squared x is my variable, so dx, and then I integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 5. And that's it. We've set up our integral. So again, a way to think about these problems is take the region, look at where you're rotating it. We're going to take a small little slice of my region, and then we're going to rotate it around. That's going to make a disk in some cases. Some cases it's going to make a washer, and, and, and we'll look at more like those as well. Uh, but pi r squared is the big formula. Pi r squared gets me the area of a disk, and then we integrate that across the entire region, which makes the solid when we re revolve it around the axis. Let's look at another one. Okay, so this is going to be y is equal to uh, negative x squared plus 4. Parabola that opens down. We're going to take this region. And we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. Alright, so we're taking that region, we're rotating it around the y-axis, uh, and asking to set up a, an integral that gets the volume. Okay, so we're, if we're rotating something around the y-axis, uh, that means that in order to make a disk shape, that we want to think about a horizontal line. So we need this horizontal line so that when we rotate it around the x axis or the y axis, we end up getting a circle shape. If I were to take a vertical line and rotate it around, that wouldn't actually work. We'll see how that happens in the next section. But for right now, a vertical line wouldn't work because if I would rotate a vertical line around the y axis, I don't get a disc, I'd actually end up getting a cylinder, right? Because it's going to have a height and it's also going to have a width. Taking a vertical line around the x, uh, the y-axis would not make a disk, so we could not use uh, pi r squared and the disk method. However, a horizontal line does work, because if I rotate my horizontal line around, then I end up getting a disk. The issue here is that because I'm using these horizontal lines, 
The variable is y, because I need to shift this up and down to make the entire region. So we take our small piece, whichever way you have to shift the small piece tells you what the variable is. So this tells me that y is the variable. Okay. So y is the variable, so we're going to need to go from here to here. Uh, I need to figure out, well this is y equals zero, this we need to figure out what that is, but that we can read off right from the original equation. It's negative x squared plus 4, that's the y-intercept right there. So this is 4. So my integral is going to be going from 0 to 4. And when these are y, I like to write y equals so that I don't forget. And it reminds me that y is the variable. y is the variable. So dy, y equals 0 to y equals 4. We still need pi r squared. The radius, though, is this. This is my radius of the circle that I get, the disk that I get when I rotate it around. Well, the radius is the function. But since y is the variable, I better have y's inside here, which means that I can't have it like this. I need to solve for x. If I solve for x, then I get, um, bring the x squared over, and I get x squared is equal to 4 minus y. I get x is equal to the square root of 4 minus y. Really, it's plus or minus. But since these are the positive, y, uh, positive x values over here, we're on the positive x side, I don't care about the negative version, and I'm okay to leave it just like this. That's my function. x is equal to root 4 minus y. Pi r squared is the formula for the, the washer, or the disk that we get, pi r squared. Uh, so that's pi times the radius, which is root 4 minus y squared. That's pi r squared. That's the area of the, of the disk that's a slice, the, the slice disk, and then we integrate it from 0 to 4 to make up the entire region as we work our way through. And that's the answer. Okay, let's do another one. What if I said exactly the same? y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. And I said now rotate around the x-axis instead. If I were to rotate around the x-axis, now I can't be using the horizontal line. If I used a horizontal line around the x-axis, I'd get a cylinder. So instead I have to use a vertical line because a vertical line rotated around the x-axis will make a washer, or make a disk. Okay, Which means that uh, x is the variable, because we're using a vertical line that then shifts along the x-axis to make the entire region. So x is my variable, which means that having it solved for y is great because x is already the variable. Now I need to know what this point is. That's, that's the question, right? Uh, and that we can't just read off. We do need to actually figure out what that is. Well, this happens when y is equal to 0. So if 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 4, uh, that means that x squared is 4, so that x is plus or minus 2. So this is x equal to 2. So then we're going to integrate. With respect to x, x is going to go from 0 to 2 pi r squared. The radius is the function height. Since x is the variable, my function is already solved with x as the variable. So pi times negative x squared plus 4 squared. That's pi r squared. And that's the answer. Okay, let's, uh, let's do one that ends up being a washer. All 
our favorite, negative x squared plus 4. And then uh, let's do another curve. which is negative 2 x squared plus 8. And our region is the region that's in between the two. And we're going to rotate this region around the x-axis. Okay, so the question, the, the first question that you should ask is, if we're going to, uh, what happens if we use a vertical line? What happens if we use a horizontal line? Which one makes more sense to use? And then how does it go from there? Uh, in this case, if we try to use a horizontal line uh, and, and rotate it around the x-axis, things would get very messy very quickly. Because a horizontal line right here is just a small little piece, and then a still from one curve to the next. But then up in here, it goes just between two sides of the same parabola. So a horizontal line is going to be pretty messy. Not only that, if you rotate a horizontal line around the x-axis, you end up getting a cylinder, which is not what we want if, uh, if we're going to use uh, the disk washer method. What we want instead here, going around the x-axis, is these vertical lines. And there's, that's nice for a few reasons. One, it's always top parabola to bottom parabola across the entire region. So the, it doesn't matter where we are, a vertical line will go top parabola to the bottom parabola and nothing changes there across the entire region. And, and not only that, if we rotate that around the x-axis, we end up getting this washer shape, right? So uh, uh, a disc with the disc cut out of it. So it's a circle with an inside circle missing. So we get this, uh, that's this, this washer shape. Again, washer um, in terms of uh, like a little rubber washer that you might find inside of a faucet uh, or um, in a water bottle to keep the, the, the water from spilling. Okay, now what happens? Right, how do I find the volume that I get when I rotate this all the way around? The only trick here is that we want the volume from the big curve, right, the top curve, and then we're going to subtract off the inside volume. So it's really just like the previous section where we had top curve minus bottom curve, but now it's big area minus small area. So remember, what we're really looking for is integrating the area as I move across x, but the area in this case is the large circle area minus the small circle area. So that's going to be pi big R squared minus pi little r squared, where big R is the top curve and the little r is the bottom curve. And the top curve in this case is this one, which I ended up writing down below. But that will be integral of pi times negative 2x squared plus 8 squared minus, so that's the top curve, pi r squared. The bottom curve is pi times negative x squared plus 4 squared dx evaluated from here to here. But we know where those points are. Those points are at negative 2 and positive 2. So this integrates from minus 2 to positive 2. So the washer is, again, just the same as the disk. It's really just two disk methods. We have the big disk minus the small disk. And then integrate it across the entire region. And that's what we got for, uh, for this method. In the next section, we will be looking at what happens when we end up taking something and rotating it around and getting a cylinder uh, rather than a disc.